Hey World Cruisers, it's Sunday, August 11th, 2024. We're on the Ultimate World Cruise and we're coming to you from Aarhus, Denmark. Our last stop in Denmark. Tomorrow we'll be heading to Norway. This is a view of Aarhus from our porch. Well, that was the welcome they gave us uh, at the port right next to the ship. And Aarhus is the second largest city in Denmark behind Copenhagen, where we just came from. And this is a view of the harbor. It is another beautiful day. Boy, we've hit a string of weather that's been unbelievable the last uh, couple of weeks. And today is no exception. It's all short sleeve weather, gentle breeze. So as we head out of the harbor, today we don't have an organized tour, it's just a group of us going on our own. These are some statues, some uh, bronze statues they had honoring the dock workers at the uh, entrance to the harbor. So those are the workers. Here comes the supervisor sitting in the bench. <laughs> yeah, he's sitting there, looks like he's having a smoke or something. I don't know. Anyway, we're headed for some really exciting uh, places today. This little, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's not really a car, it's a transport vehicle. It's kind of cute. Never seen one before anywhere. It's three wheels. Probably has like a motorcycle engine, but it's enclosed. It's smaller than a smart car. And it was parked with the bicycle. So anyway, we just thought it was interesting. So we're headed for uh, a couple different museums. One is a, an open air museum uh, that shows different periods of uh, life in Denmark most interesting part for us was the 1500s and 1600 years. So this is the walk on the way and this great neighborhood here, these beautiful houses with flowers and cobblestone streets. Just uh, a beautiful little neighborhood. So colorful. took a short walk in a botanical garden uh, while we were waiting for this uh, open air museum to open up. There's an old windmill. Where's Don Quixote when you need him? It's an authentic one. And that's part of that building in the back is part of the botanical garden. Which we didn't go inside the botanical garden other than just to walk the garden. That's the stairway into the back of the windmill. Looks like they had it locked. It wasn't turning. There was probably enough wind that day to make it turn. This is Den Gamli Bai. It's the name of the, I don't know, I think I probably butchered that name, but this is the open air museum that uh, shows life in Denmark in various periods of time. So we headed straight for the, the old period, which is the 1500s and 1600s. And these buildings were all authentic, built in the time frame that I just mentioned. All of them were moved here uh, over the years 
and placed in one location as part of this museum. And it's really excellent. It's very well done. Oh, you see. And then there's people wearing period costumes that are working in some of these places. This building here is a, an old uh, water, a water wheel, probably was a grain mill or something. My camera wouldn't record inside, it was too dark, but I'll, I can show you the water wheel and the canal system they built to support it. So it's only about a three foot drop of water that, that allows that mill to work. You see the little dam they have there. Pretty confident this place has been used for movie sets for movies back in the 1500s and 1600s. So we're going to go into a number of uh, like shops, like candle makers and uh, drugstore, coffin maker, and, and of course I couldn't show them all to you because it would have taken too long. But I'll show a few of them to you. Beautiful horses. Must have been hard for them to ride on those cobblestone streets. So the first little shop we went in down to the left is the coppersmith building. And so the coppersmith lived and worked in this little shop here. There's some examples of the work that would have been done here. The ceilings weren't very tall. I guess the people were shorter back in those days, but that's the coppersmith shop right there. And this building uh, dates to 1571. There's a plaque above the door that says that this is the uh, pharmacy. So who knows what medicines they had back in 1571. But notice the painting on the ceiling beams there. This is the candle maker's shop where he also worked and lived in this quarters, in his quarters here. might have been making soap in there too over on the right hand side there's some looks like soap this is the other half of the building where his quarters were see they have a, a trendle bed that pulls out from under that bench and he was snoring in there otherwise I'd have thought he was dead Just the shoemaker shop. That guy looked, it was uncanny how real he looked. Even it's like a wax figure or something. He's got his apprentice in there and he's got a rack full of completed shoes in the back. And he must have been doing pretty well because his house was a lot bigger than the others. I'll show you the other side of it, the living quarters here for the shoemaker. But still pretty Spartan. He had two stoves, one on each side, keep the place warm in the winter. Hey, here's the, the coffin shop. Mark, yeah, get in there and there's the lid to the car. It was uh, fastened to the wall so you couldn't put the lid on it. <laughs> or he probably would have. <laughs> Anyway, some pretty nice work there. Still, they were small people because uh, neither one of us would really fit in that coffin very well. <laughs> I 
I, I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, that's my next house. <laughs> Everybody was trying out the stilts. I didn't do very well. Laurie did really well. She probably got the gold medal for the stilt contest. Our next stop was the Museum of Art, which was uh, you know, maybe a quarter of a mile walk from the Open Air Museum. And it has this colored glass circular thing that overlooks the city. My camera didn't know what to do with all that red light. But it's a beautiful thing to walk around. You get a good view of the city. And it's beautiful. Our next stop was the Mosgard Museum where the bog man is now. The bog man was discovered in 1952 in a bog not far from here and he is the best preserved 2,000 year old man in the whole world. Gau, I don't know if you pronounce it, Gau, Graubel? Graubel man. Anyway, they have him preserved in here uh, in an oxygen free environment uh, laying in the same position that he was found in the bog. So he found in April 26 on April 26, 1952, and he was the subject of a lot of uh, news and uh, National Geographic articles and stuff. They, they could examine the contents of his stomach, they know what he ate for his last meal. Uh, we know he had a broken leg and his throat was slit. So they surmised that uh, it was some kind of a sacrifice, but they noticed that he had uh, two teeth that were uh, abscessed. So I, since I couldn't get it very well with my camera, Laurie's uh, iPhone camera took much better pictures in that dim light. So these last few pictures here were taken by Laurie's camera. And you can see how complete he was. They've done DNA testing. And, they know he, you know he had some arthritis. He's probably 30 to 40 years old. He has hair. His original beard, for some reason, he had an inch and a half beard, but it's must have fallen off during all the autopsies and whatnot they did. But that's the gray bell man. And it's one of a kind in the whole world. So we, we consider ourselves lucky that we had chance to go and see him. Well, stay tuned for Oslo, Norway tomorrow. We're going to sail north to Oslo, and we'll be in Norway for the next uh, week or so. We'll start off in Oslo, so we'll see you tomorrow in Oslo.